Does the drink any better? I didn't say anything before. <laughs> oh. Ah, oh, closer, closer. Just say something very norm normally what we always say. In other words, he's he's becoming he's he's becoming like an enlightened being. In like an enlightened being doesn't know the good and bad, right? But that's why you see this is very very important to know. You see, that's why I was, you know, kind of trying to tell you that these technical things are so important to understand. Now the enlightenment being, he doesn't have any good and bad because he has accomplished, he has abandoned the dualism of bad and good. But this being, he doesn't have good and bad because his sense is powerless. Now, but there's something good about it. <laughs> if this part of being is kind of a small time practitioner, there, he has a very good chance to sort of leap over some of the practice. Because uh, not only he knows the theory of non-dualism, but his natural cause of this dying is helping him to have non-dualism. Now, does that mean that everybody has to sort of, maybe should rush to the uh, dying time? <laughs> Especially people like us, small-time practitioners. Does it mean that? No, why, 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 why? Come on, Chua. Why? Why? No, 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 don't talk about that. Why? 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 Tell me more. No, 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 no. Why? No, no, why? Because that dying procedure, that all this technical, long-winded technical is happening every moment. So every moment there is a chance of enlightenment. That's the whole idea of bringing this Bardo teaching into you, you know. You got it? So. Let's go back to this dege uh, degeneration of the senses. After this being, after, n after not managing what is bad and what is good, n not managing to know what is bad and what is good, then his consciousness will be dissolved into the space. And then his outer breath will then stop. I guess at this is the point where most of us rush and, you know, sort of dump body inside the coffin and, you know, kind of cremate them. Now, here there's a little bit of analysis here. And at that time, when the consciousness dissolves into the space, at that time you will uh, notice that the color of the body becomes actually uh, suddenly better, you know, uh, very energetic. Even though up to now there was no warmth on the body, uh, at that point there will be some kind of warmth on the heart level. It says like a butter lamp. When it when when the butter is finishing, just before it finish, this lamp this fire becomes kind of big and then it dies. Huh? So up to this, from yesterday onwards up to this, this is what we call common signs of the dying. As as I explained uh, this, some uh, to a gentleman on that side mm. yesterday. Um, if the three, what, the karmic force, what was it? Life force? Merit. Ah, very good. Ah, so good. Uh, this, if the three of these not, uh, have not uh, yet degenerated or something, then people can actually, uh, some beings can come up, you know, can revive. revive. Mm -hmm. Now, if not, then the uncommon signs will arise. Or uncommon uh, but dysfunction will then begin. begin. Yeah. Now this is even more technical and this is going to be a little bit controversial also. It is believed in the Vajrayana that when one's own body is formed in the mother's womb, essence of the semen of the father in the form of a letter hung, white hung, usually abides on the top of the avaduti, you know the channel, the central channel? Oh, some of you are quite familiar with this. Yeah? And as all these outer, inner and, yeah, outer and inner winds and elements dysfunction, everything is finished. Yeah? And as you are really going to die, as this merits and karmic force and all this uh, come, makes all this are, you know, finished, exhaust. Especially uh, because the upper wind 
is now in the dysfunction, dysfunction state, this letter hung will dis, uh, what do you call it descend? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it will uh, fall down. You know. Now, again, for those who are practicing Vajra Yogini, here you can have a little bit of um, explanation here. Like the Vajra Yogini practitioners, they try to sort of pull that down even when we are alive, you know, when we are. <laughs> thing. But that, I don't think this I, I am allowed to sort of, you know, elaborate because Mahakalas and Kalis might <laughs> do something. So as this white drop fall, then as an effect of that falling, thirty different kinds of conception which is uh, oriented by anger will uh, then begin to um, stop or dysfunction, thirty different kinds, uh, like um, some I would just, I can't go through all. Um, if you want, uh, maybe we can make a photocopy of this tomorrow. Yeah. Detachment, medium detachment, intense detachment, m mental engagement, um, disengagement, lesser sadness, me medium sadness, Intense sadness, peace, conceptualization, fear, medium fear, and intense fear. Anyway, uh, so anyway, there's 33 different types of thoughts that is oriented by anger will stop. So this brother being doesn't have anger now. Same argument that we had earlier. Very close to enlightenment now. Very close. No need to practice. All your body and wind and all these channels and all these elements are helping you in a way that they are, you know, they are helping you um, uh, by themselves sacrificing or kind of degenerating. And as they degenerate more, it helps us more. I think actually less of the senses is better, you know. Imagine from the beginning less of time, we never have any eyes. I think we can save lots of problems. I, think, I, I mean, I, I don't, I think that we will have we, we won't have many of the problems that we have. You will not able to watch you know, horror movies. So many good things, huh? So then, okay, on the top of that, no ears. All this problem arises because of these senses, you see. Okay. The essence of the... <laughs> the essence of the uh, rakta, or the blood. Rakta means blood, kind of blood. Anyway, I don't really know whether it's a really good literal translation. Uh, the rakta of the from the mother, which ab, uh, which is in the form of ashe, the half a, which abides on the you know navel, right? Now this because. The lower wind has now begun to sort of dysfunction. So this ashe will ascend, ascend, sort of, you know, go up. Oh, actually, I forgot to tell you, when that hung, you know, the drop, when it falls down, this dying being will experience like a very clear moon arise some kind of a very, very, you know, a very bright and cool and bright and silence, that kind of appearance, uh, that kind of perception. And as this ashe ascend, then this dying being will experience a bright red and kind of shitty, um, you know, no, uh, I'm sorry, bright red, just alone, that. Mm -hmm. At that point, um, 40 different kinds of conceptions or the thoughts that is being oriented by attachment or the desire 
will begin to stop or dysfunction. So some of them are ayod, desire, cling, joy, medium joy, intense joy, rejoicing, um, deep respect, deep respect, amazement. <laughs> Uh, amazement, amazement, uh. satisfaction, sensual excitement, uh. shamelessness, yeah, all these kind of, anyway, forty, is it forty? Yes, forty different kinds of thoughts that is uh, something to do with the desire will stop. So this being has no desire and anger now. Now the sense faculties, sense objects are not working anymore. There is no form, feelings, there is no gross elements, gross and subtle elements. So there is really nothing apart from this ascending and descending of white and red drop. So in between there, there is what they call pervading rikpa. Now this is where you have to be a little bit of enigma over here, you see. So the rikpa is now being uh, sort of sandwiched between this r white and red drop. And when that happens, the appearance of blank blackness, darkness, darkness kind of appearance will arise. No more color now. No more this subtle, uh, you know, cogn cognitive of, you know, cognition of uh, color, you know. At this point, um, seven different types of thoughts, very, very subtle thoughts or conceptions, which is usually oriented by ignorance, will stop. Some of them are the moment of medium desire, forgetfulness, confusion, being stunned, laziness, and so on. Now, at this point, some beings, those who does not have, who, those who have very strong negative karma, bad karma, will then suffer, and this suffering is the suffering of death. So this is the last dissolution now. You see, all the elements are dissolved, all the, and dissolved into your consciousness, and consciousness is dissolved into what space, right? Now the space is also dissolved into luminosity. So this experience comes to everybody, every beings, but of course it varies. Now, the order doesn't have to have come according to this book. Order. The orders of the dissolutions yeah? have to come. doesn't have to come. Although it took us, you know, two days to explain this, when it came, it, it, can, it can easily come within one second, all of this. It can happen, uh, you know, every day also, you know, each day, you know, it takes you know, so therefore, it is very important to engage into the Holy Dharma mm -hmm, and try to uh, practice according to the Pardo teaching. For example, if you are Vajra, uh, Vajra if you are Hey Vajra practitioner, especially if you have received the path initiation, these these are the time that you have to remind yourself of the inner deities and the outer. Especially when you have this white appearance, the moon-like appearance, when the reddish color appearance, uh, perception, when that arises, it is the time you remember the emptiness and things like that. When the darkness appearance arises, it is the time you stay in the equali equ equality. And generally speaking, when the when when the earth element dissolves. Uh, if you are a good practitioner, these are, you know, if you are quite a good practitioner, then you know which element is dissolving, you know. So during the earth element dissolution, uh, you re visualize the Guru inside your heart and pray. When the water dissolves and when you see the, the smoke-like uh, signs, you see when the earth dissolves, there will be mirage kind of sign. You remember these things? Yeah. Uh, anyway, when the water dissolves and when you see a smoke-like sign, then you, you visualize the Guru uh, 
on the navel and pray. When the fire element dissolves and when you see the fireflies kind of experience, then you visualize the Guru on the forehead and pray. And when the uh, what, um, air element dissolves and when you see this bright light sign, then this is the time that you uh, pray, you visualize Guru on the top of your head and then this is actually the time you do the actual power practice. Poa, I'm not going to talk here. So I have jumped to the page 15 to 25. Uh, I'm, I will ha still have to jump a lot because, you know, Bardo teaching in five days is just uh, in, impossible. So we still have about 57 pages. Uh, tonight we will, yeah, okay, we will stop here. Since uh, our friends here, uh, the Vajrayana fans, they have to bring the guests of Dakas and Dakinis. Seems that uh, Stephen has already sent an invitation card to Vajrayogini. <laughs> but um, I think I'm going to say, sorry, I can't come to this party. But five questions before that. Five. Strictly on Bardo, please. Tomorrow it will come. Then four questions. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to calculate with Michael here. Twenty one thousand six hundred minutes, write it down. Really? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Normal people. Yeah. Yeah, someone like you. Wait, wait, wait. So, 21,600 minutes for the normal people. Uh, for you, minus one is 2, 21,599 minutes. <laughs> yeah, good. This is good. Duration of this uh, mind going out from the body. Yeah. Sandwich between the two drops. You are Rikpa. Pardon? Uh, because you, it just it doesn't mean that sandwich in between these two. What it actually means is you have no connection with all these gross phenomena, except these two drops, right? You are last goodbye to the form and something tangible. Uh, and the rigpa is there, you know, with them. So this is the state we call it a sandwich in between these two. With a hung and ah. And then Rikpa says goodbye to this hung and ah. At that point, the darkness and then the space element dissolves into the luminosity. You see? Two more. Don't leave me. Anything. When you are in panic, you know, just. <laughs> sometimes you don't remember the prayer. Where was it? Uh, this, uh, once I took a plane from, you know, uh, Amsterdam. To uh, Geneva, right? And then suddenly, in the middle of the air, one of the, the what do you call it? The jet has engine, engine, mm. propeller. Not really the propeller, but inside they have huh? mm. the turning. Thing. Yeah, yeah, turning thing. Mm. The, well, they didn't say this uh -huh. for f about f uh, 40 minutes. The plane was just going like this, you know. Like, so then people start to question, and people start to suspect. So then the captain says, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we are very sorry to inform you this, but we might have to go through a crash landing because our this thing doesn't work. <laughs> so I was... Uh, I didn't do any prayers. I, I was not even actually afraid. Yeah. I don't know what happened, actually. But then again, just before landing, just before when we are near to the Geneva, they tried every different method, you know, tried to take time and... Anyway, it worked again. So it landed. And, you know, the Geneva airport was full of fire engines and police and ambulance and all these lights going on like, you know, nightclub. You know. <laughs> then I started to be afraid for about few days. Few days I, I was afraid. I didn't know how to pray also. And for, for what? 
for what I should pray, you know, because the incident is already happened, right? And uh, at that time I didn't pray because completely it was kind of blank. <laughs> yeah. Later you were afraid. At that time it's too late. I mean, there's nothing to pray for unless you want to try it again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when such things happen, you know, mm. when such things happen, you're already in panic, you know. So you don't know whether you'll pray it, pray or not. Yeah. So, you know, connection with your guru should be very strong. So that as you remember your lover or your friend or your belongings, very precious belongings, wherever you go, then you will no need to have any effort to uh, sort of remind. <coughs> One more. <coughs> what? Calling Lama. Yeah. Really? Hmm? To me? Wave the London Time Out magazine. <laughs> Do you understand? You know, in London there's a Time Out magazine called Time Out. Mm. You see where movies are going, where theatres are going on, where the operas are going on, where, what kind of operas are going on. Just wave that in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> then I will come right away. <laughs> so you see, you have seven offerings and now you can have eight offerings. <laughs> But this is only for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is only for you. <laughs> Do you have like this in Singapore? Time out? I didn't see. I don't think so. Not really tourist guide, you know. This time out is quite interesting. Everything is there. Yeah, everything. From samsara to nirvana. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, true. What teachings are going on in London? Really? You know, Hindu teachings, Buddhist teachings, which Rinpoches are visiting, just everything. This, this big, every week. How about this big? Uh, one more question or this is the last? This is the last. Okay. We are talking about an ignorant being reaching to the Dharmata state. And uh, this ignorant being has reached this state not because of any practice, right? Do you remember? But because of what? Because of what? Stephen, can you answer that? Yes, elaborate. Mm. Can you elaborate, please? Mm -hmm. Yes. And more clear reasons why this ignorant being has reached to this state of the Dharmata, would you like to say that? Why? Pardon? Okay. What did you say? Ah, with typical Buddhist answer, that. <laughs> Natural of mind. Hmm? Where's our this, uh, gem? Where's he? Ah. <laughs> Yam, would you say something? <laughs> Speak up. So there are many do people downstairs? Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. Then, just elaborate more. Elaborate. Why this, bardu, this ignorant being has reached to the state of the Dhammada without any practice? Without any practice of the Dhamma, he has reached to the state of the Dhammata. Why is that? Oh, we talked about it whole night last night. Come on. That... That... Because... What? What? Sense... Yes. Is dysfunction. Right, that's quite good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. So, mm. so when there's no sense, then there, when there's no, no sense objects, which means there's no gross dualism, right? Mm -hmm. Would you like to say something? That's a good question. That's what we are going to talk here. Good. And there are a few questions that has to raise today. Do you remember? Or you have forgotten? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, 
uh, this dissolution, you know, of this white and red drops and things like that on all these elements doesn't actually take time. Normally, it is. It this all happens within one second or a half a second. Even it can. Sometimes it can happen slowly. If it it happens slowly, then. Normally, this bardo being will have difficult time to remember the gurus and things like that. But then, what we are trying to do is we are trying to influence mind of us, mind of ours. At this moment, in this bardo, bardo of natural life, get more accustomed to the guru and the teaching and the prayers, right? So that. We will have no kind of effortless. They call it spontaneous way of mixing the guru's mind and one's own mind. It will come again. We have reached to a very special state, state where there is no sense and there is no sense faculties. And this uh, this state is very special because when there is no sense, then you cannot be disturbed. You cannot be distracted. Many of this emotion comes when there's l- more distractions. No distractions can ever distract this being because there's no doors, you know, to get in. All these distractions can't find any doors to get into this being because the six usual six doors are already blocked, or I mean, it's all disfun- you know, completely not functioning anymore. <clears throat> so therefore, you know, this state is. Uh, a state which uh, all the yogis are trying to grab. Grab, grab, yeah. But we, we are not talking about uh, this, uh, you know, yogi anxiously waiting for the so-called death. Because if you think carefully, this state arises every moment. Let's say you look at the wall. After a split second, then you look at the chair, the dissolution of the, uh, you know, earlier. You know, phenomena is all gone, dissolved, and um, a new thought, a new phenomena has arisen. But that in between is something that which we people think is so difficult to get in, because we are so indulged to the future plans, we are so indulged to the in- entertainments, we are so indulged to, uh, and wo- we are so anxious to know what will happen in the. Future. And also, in between that, if if you try to remain in between that, then it just becomes so boring. And boredom is something that we all hate. But one must know. Now this has some logic. The boredom, you know, this boring thing. Boredom. In our human mind, we think that boredom is there when there is less. Entertainment or less distraction. So when we are bored, we pick up newspaper, we switch on the TV, and we try to uh, sort of occupy ourselves and uh, destroy this boredom. But here we are talking exactly the opposite. The boredom is there because of the distraction. More entertainment you have, more boredom you will have. You know, this you entertainment, these. This excitement, this entertainment, these shows, these newspapers, these are all going to lead you to the really, really, you know, unbreakable bottom, bad bottom, bad bottom. But then we Buddhist should learn how to appreciate this bottom, a state of state where there is no emotion, state where you will watch a suspenseful movie and you will not get, uh, uh, you know, suspense, <coughs> feeling of suspense. And this is st- this boredom is something that we are very afraid of. That's why again and again I ask you the questions: How many of how many of us here really want to get enlightenment, or is this uh, you know desire of enlightenment another sort of a newspaper or a, a TV or another sort of a piece of uh, entertainment? People or people who talk, especially people who. Uh, uh, you know, fantasize about the pure land. They, you know, they think that enlightenment is place where you enjoy and sort of, you know, 
you know, much more sophisticated place, better traffic rules, you know, better manner, you see. So, even the Pure Land sect, you know, they have to be careful here. If they, be, you know, based on our dualism, if they imagine a Pure Land, something like completely, you know, no fault, a realm of no fault, then I think, according to me, I'm not saying that the Pure Land has fault, but what I'm saying is that thinking that Pure Land should be a place of no fault is a little bit of, uh, you know, discrimination. Pure Land should be beyond the no fault and fault. Pure Land, if the Pure Land is a f place of no fault, then it will be really difficult because um, Okay, let's say if in uh, if pure land doesn't have thief, okay, even in the pure land there's no thief, okay, then you will have no uh, pleasure of having the big beautiful doors and uh, keys, locks. You don't have to go through that. Let's say in the pure realm you don't have to go to toilet. Then all this toilet, all this beautiful shampoos and soaps and all those uh, are gone, you know? So, as we search like that, Pure Land becomes slowly boring. <laughs> so we may like to stay here instead. <clears throat>